Well, good morning then, and uh, you join me back out on my next session. Now, some of you may recognize the lake behind me. I am at Acorn Fisheries for 24 hours. Now, booked the session on the, uh, on the Catch app, had a little look on the map, see what availability there was, and I've got 24 hours at my disposal. I've actually got a really busy month ahead of me for a number of different reasons. So I wanted somewhere relatively local, somewhere that I could get my first night in of the session. So yeah, went onto the Go Catch app, saw that uh, yeah there was a swim available, and uh, made the booking. Now this uh, this session is going to be a little bit different. Not going to be under the uh, material of my bivy. I'm actually going to be staying in this rather spacious hut now i'm in hut number seven um i've had a bit of a sort of not a good start to the morning because the people the the lads that were in here before me they weren't awake when i, ro I rocked up around 20 past seven my ticket starts at half seven i had to knock on the door a few times and yeah get them out of sleeping bags unfortunately so yeah i've had to sort of waste the best part of 20 30 minutes waiting for them to pack up and get their stuff and stuff like that out to swim their tackle and stuff and then uh yeah quickly rush just to get my bits up together and get the rod sort of sorted but yeah i've got some nice little features in front of me to fish to uh someone over on to the left of me um it's just literally photographing a fish now but uh yeah bit of a rubbish start to the morning sort of half an hour of my session that's been eaten away but like I say got 23 and a half hours left to try and make something happen so I'm really excited to see how this uh, session is going to pan out like I say haven't needed to bring my barrow haven't needed to bring my bivy got a nice spacious hut at my disposal even though at the moment I'm just literally sat out the front that'll all go in at some point later on this afternoon so I want to stay sort of watching the water as much as I can not that I can move, but just for uh, yeah, any signs of anything that might be happening in front of my swim. So uh, yeah, enough of an intro. I'm already in a rush as it is. I just rigged up a few uh, rigs down there in the bucket. So time to get them onto the uh, onto the rods, ship them out with a bait and spoon, and uh, yeah, see what this session has in store for me. So fingers crossed we can make something happen through the course of the uh, the 24 hours before tomorrow morning. But I'll uh, yeah talk to you about everything that I'm doing, bait, um, spots, etc., etc., as I go. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can make something happen. Right. Well, a very quick look then with the deeper, and it's all pretty much sort of muchness of muchness out there. It's all pretty much the same. Um, pretty uniformed between six and a half and seven foot and uh, yeah sort of just barren of any sort of features really <clears throat> the only sort of features that I did find with it just sort of moving it around was where I'm getting closer up to sort of like the main islands probably about <clears throat> I don't know a section off so one of the deep, uh, one of the bushwhacker sections off um, it gets a lot cleaner it reveals a uh, much sort of uh, more glowing lake bed and that will probably make sense because there is a bridge on the other side which people walk around and kind of bait up right around the face of the island so it would <clears throat> excuse me probably make sense that that sees you know a majority of anglers bait rigs and it's probably why it's relatively cleaner because fish often will be scooting around it obviously hoovering up the anglers bait so um, that will explain that. I've got the little islands to my left with like a bridge on it. Now I went up sort of like the face of the island and again that's seven foot and then just goes right up to sort of four and a half foot just off the right hand side, uh, right hand side of it. So it does sort of, um, you know, shallow up as it gets to that island. Now <clears throat> I'm probably just going to drop a, uh, a bag and a spoon worth of bait sort of at the bottom of that shelf in that deeper water where they come around the bottom. Like I say, have one over to the face of the islands, but sort of like a metre off it onto that really clean, clean lake bed. And I think for my third rod, the guys that are in uh, hut number five, um, they have said that I'm, I'm more than welcome to explore this water to my right. They're not going to be sort of fishing it through the day. I think they're just having a bit of a social stuff like that from the hut and fishing from the same, same hut for now. And they might bring their rods down later this evening so yeah they have allowed me to fish in their water which is very kind of them so i might just drop one sort of i don't know 
halfway out really you know close quarters i want to keep it all low key if i can um and try and just allow the fish to drift over to me from the pressure because i believe every swim is taken this weekend so that's my thinking just going to like i say keep it low key do what i do know works most of most other places keep it all relatively you know like i say quiet um and just just deposit in my bait with a spoon and stuff no casting or anything like that no spotting and just hopefully allow the fish to just naturally drift into my area where hopefully they don't feel the pressure so uh yeah time to get the rods out and get that kettle on Before I just build the solid bag on my second rod I thought I'd quickly talk you through how I've got it set up for this session now uh, <clears throat> you would have seen this many times on my videos and uh, I've just had to tweak the uh, the hook to fit in with fishery rules so to start with I have got a length of lead free leader now basically uh, this leader material is really supple really heavy hugs a bottom hugs a bottom and uh, yeah fits in with fishery rules so there is no lead core on acorn but you can go naked tubing or leaders so I've opted for the lead free leaders just because I've used them before and I know that that is pinned down a meter from my solid bag absolutely lovely I then move down to a two and a half ounce inline flat pair lead and uh, the leadless leader just runs through the middle of that onto a quick change swivel. Now that swivel comes out of there really really easy so if for any reason this was to crack off, snap off, get cut off, whatever then this would basically allow the lead to just slide off eventually, drop off the back of the, uh, off the leader the fish would just be trailing this until it obviously uh, does away with the barbless hook. So what I usually like to do is just squeeze down the swivel inside the actual lead itself. I push it together ever so slightly, just literally a millimetre, just to allow the swivel to go inside there really, really easy and pop off really easy as well. I've had some real screaming takes doing this. It's kind of like a bolt effect initially where it's hit the lead with the short, supple rig. And then once it sort of takes off, um, in angry mode the sort of lead just flies up the back of the leader and it's kind of becomes like a running rig so it gets that initial hit from the lead as it then sort of shakes its head in bolts this lead slides up the leader and yeah you do get some absolutely savage runs on uh, on this setup so yeah I'll just squeeze it in like I say a millimeter just allows a little bit of tension for the lead to sit tight over the swivel and uh, then again like I say it just slides up when the fish takes off now under the other side of that it's like a quick change um, hook basically and you just hook your uh, solid bag rig over the top and I've just covered it then with a mini anti-tangle sleeve there's like a three and a half inch rig supple rig all nice and soft which will be compacted down into the solid bag so there's no kinks there's no sort of uh, coated braid on there at all anything like that anything that's not going to allow me to manipulate this rig inside the bag and it'll just be sort of led amongst the, the offerings of the solid bag and just be nice and soft ready to be sucked up into Mr. Carp's mouth so three and a half inches of soft supple braid then down to the hook end, let's get that to focus. It is a uh, barbless size four. Now I do like size fours because they do lend themselves to staying in nine times out of 10 when they uh, go in. Now I've used size sixes in the past um, and yeah, I just don't feel there's enough on them to, uh, to stay in when it's a barbless, barbless rule. So yeah, go with a size four wide gapes, my ever faithful sort of solid bag hook little bit of shrink tube on the shank just to keep the hair in place and then a little bit of shrink tube over the eye just for neatness and then what I've got there is a seafood wafter now as you would have seen from my uh, my previous video I have joined forces with hinders so <clears throat> I'm going to be putting to test their wafters on this session so I'm a massive uh, solid bag angler as you already know and uh, these wafters are a little bit bigger than what I've normally used but along with the size 4 hook they don't look too far sort of you know out of sort of 
too big or anything like that to you know for the, the size of the hook stuff like that so they're probably as big as I would go but uh, you know I could always trim the edges off if I really need to so what I'm going to do on this session is just try three different um, three different hook baits really and just chop and change I've got six hook baits in there so I've got plenty to sort of try out if I feel I want to or if one's getting bites over the other etc so <clears throat> yeah I've gone with the, uh, the seafood on one which is like a brownie one absolutely reeks glugged to the high heavens as you can see there there's all sort of glug all on them I'll give them a little boost when I got them so they're soaking that up nicely um, the other rod that I've just put out is the new nut bait again sort of like a creamy washed out pale color they're really really nice they go with the sort of lighter pellets and stuff that I put in the spoon and stuff like that and then yeah the other ones I'm just gonna have a little mix and match really you've got tutti fruities I've got beet and nana again they're like a brownie neutrally type color I've got a bright orange one so yeah well to my oyster with those hook baits I've got six at my disposal and uh, yeah I'll just chop and change as I see fit really but uh, yeah let's get this other solid bag made up get that one out to my uh, my chosen spot get that last rod out and uh, yeah we're fishing rods out two left on the right hand side of the swim so the right hand rod is over to the face of the island about a section a bushwhacker section off it onto the right really nice clean bottom this rod which is the left one out of the two is just off this little island again at the bottom of the drop off on the real nice bright hard yellow bottom that was uh, returning on the deeper and then as you would have seen the little rod tucked up on its own down there fishing literally a rod length out just underneath this bridge on the uh, absolutely glowing yellow bottom so i'm really happy that bag went down with an absolute thud i felt it and it's fishing and it'd be absolutely bang on so i'm just going to leave that to do its thing sprayed a little handful of bait over the top of that one and obviously these two had a bushwhacker spoon of bits and pieces as well so nothing too heavy uh, more carpet feed and attraction it was leftover bait from my previous session i've had an airtight bag and it's really softened up where it's drawn in all the liquid that i put in on the last session so i could sort of just squelch it together with my hands it was sort of that soft and the boilies were the little 12 mil boilies were uh, really really soft so i really crumbed them down as well so yeah minimal food maximum attraction just in hope of trying to nick myself a bite now behind me this is where it's slightly messy not too bad so i haven't had to bring a load of stuff with me it's usually a lot worse than this while i'm trying to fart around fart ass around getting the rods ready and stuff like that but this is relatively tidy to be fair but that's because i chucked some of it inside as well but yeah this is a hut nice big double spacious hut sort of the uh opening doors there the double glazed sort of opening doors obviously that one would open as well so if you're here in the summer get a bit of air into the hut um but yeah it's just like a big double shed so a little table in there you can put bits and pieces on but yeah masses of room more than enough room for me this is uh yeah just going to keep everything tidy and out the way because i will sort of uh, drop into here obviously at night time just fish quite close um to the front i doubt i'll shut the door um because i don't even really shut my door on my bivy to be quite honest with you it also has uh electric light 
so if you're in here as well you can just flick that on in the dark not that i will because again i very rarely use my head torch let alone a uh, full-on electric light but yeah just a nice big shed sort of area window as well for a bit more circulation again if you are staying in here in winter easily get two bed chairs in here without a doubt even if they were you know jumbo king size ones you'd easily get them in loads of room in the middle for cooking or whatever but yeah then looking out you've got your concrete platform so there's no getting your socks wet if you're running out of out shoes like i often do but uh yeah that is sort of your view when you are uh looking out of your hut you've got a good sort of view of the lake you've got a good view of your swim your rods if you want you put them on a pod you can put them obviously on the concrete i was just a little bit wary <laughs> uh, yeah that um they may might end up in the lake i'm just a bit so sort of worried about that happening so i've just tucked it down the right hand side on the little bit of uh grassy mud there and just stabbed the front sticks in just uh worried about obviously the pod skidding off the concrete but uh yeah like i say all nice and clean and tidy where you can uh have a comfortable session now obviously it's not my kind of usual type of fishing i uh don't often do this to be quite honest with you um i just thought i've got 24 hours at my disposal there was a swim free and i thought i'd come and give it a go so yeah that is my home for this evening i think it's time to get some breakfast on really really nice common in there taking off the uh, corner of that little island now first I thought it had been done the uh, indicator went straight up to the blank of the rod and just sat there I thought nah I've been done here because I looked over to the island and there was a massive plume of bubbles and I thought nah I've just been done so I slackened off the indicator and uh, just pulled up tight again lifted into the rod yeah it's a real short but sweet battle and we've got a mega clean common in the net oh buzzing no blank for me it's been quiet all day not seen a single thing apart from those two shows over there well then here we go 24 pounds and ounces look at him what a cool common carp he is absolutely duffing me up on the mat because uh yeah he come in like a sack of spuds but look how cool he is literally golden not a uh, scale out of sight yeah well happy with that solid bag don't even know what hook bait, it, hook bait it was i'll have a look in a minute but yeah look how clean he is oh yeah buzzing well happy to get off the mark get in there the rod's been out what i don't know four five hours and it's 24 pounder just could not resist keeping everything low key and uh, not recasting causing any disturbance has obviously allowed this one to come in feed freely on my bait and slip up on my solid bag get in there time is drawing on it is half past five the camera actually makes it look uh, lighter than it actually is out here but still ridiculously flat calm all three rods two down two down there and the one just tucked up to my left have been redone um, with a generous little spoonful of bait over the top just to see me through the night hoping 
that uh, yeah we can turn one into two but let's see what the uh, hours of darkness have in store I suppose like I say I've only seen two shows all day and had that one fish so it is pretty quiet to be quite honest with you so uh, yeah let's just see what uh, what happens through the night and uh, early mornings Good morning and uh, yeah we are into the last half an hour of my session I've got a beautiful sunrise over one shoulder and that moon setting over the other it's a really really quiet night um, yeah nothing at all didn't have the best night sleep to be quite honest with you but uh, yeah, it's tossing and turning, but when I was awake, I didn't hear any, you know, any crashes, any boshes, any sign of fish, to be quite honest. And those rods remained motionless. Now, obviously, I've still got half an hour of my session left, so there's always a chance as, uh, yeah, as the morning and the sun starts to rise. So uh, yeah, you never know, there might be one more in it. But I'm definitely not complaining with leaving with a uh, 24 pound common um, on my first night of the year and my first night on this water. Now everything is packed down. I had a quick pack down this morning. I didn't bring a lot with me anyway. So uh, yeah, I've just got all that sorted, ready to just drive the car around, load in and get on my way home. So if you've watched the video, thank you for watching as always. Leave me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, get involved in any of my social media. Come and say hi. And uh, more importantly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support on the channel. So uh, yeah, I'm looking to bring you more videos like this throughout the year. So uh, yeah, if nothing else occurs through the next half an hour, I will leave it there. <laughs>